So, Hi. Yeah? yeah, right? Yes. Deal? Boing. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. module for that there of course there is we are at aquia's headquarters in burlington i am with an intern that we have with us this summer why don't you introduce uh, yourself and tell us what you're doing here well my name is adam honick as uh, as you said and i am here for three months through about mid-november and i'm going to be laying the groundwork and writing large parts of the Drupal module upgrader, um, which is hopefully going to be every bit as cool as it sounds. Excellent. So what's your first Drupal memory? How did you get into Drupal? My first Drupal memory is I've been using it since version 5 in 2007, and I started that uh, two jobs ago at a little uh, web shop called Digital Loom in Cambridge, Massachusetts. And uh, my first Drupal memory is completely making a just a total hash of a theme, um, not knowing what anything was or what it did and just deleting variables and changing variables and not understanding anything That's, and totally bungling it. It sounds like a good Drupal site, five, Drupal 5 site built. I mean, that sounds familiar. Well, I've come a long way since. Now my themes actually work. I'm writing modules too, oh my God. How's Drupal changed between then and now? I'd say it's become a lot more robust and a lot more developer friendly. Like I remember in Drupal 5, we didn't have like the crazy hook menu that we do. And uh, like and with that, we've had in Drupal 6 and 7. And it's just, you know, when I started using Drupal 6, I remember using Views 2 and being like, just blown away. Like, oh my God, this is a million times better. And then having to maintain a Drupal 5 site was just like a nightmare, you know, it was slogging through molasses. Um, and then Drupal 7 was the same way. It just keeps getting better and better. Same with Drupal 8. It sounds like you came to Drupal through a job. What made you stick with Drupal? Well, well, I mean, there were Drupal shops, so I didn't have a choice. Um, but what made me stick with it and not start like advocating for switching to another platform is uh, I got to know it, and I just got used to it, and I got really good at making sites on it. And so it's just kind of it's kind of what I know now, and I'm very comfortable with it, and I feel very agile with it, and like. You know, I also feel like I can use it to write modules and like software and things that do programs that just do a lot. So I like it. It's like a, I just think it's a really solid platform to work on. So good reasons. So Adam, what's your favorite thing about Drupal? My favorite thing about Drupal that I see probably Drupal Core. Um, like just developing on Drupal core, it's like you can tell that a lot of smart people put a lot of brain power into this thing and that they've thought of, there's just a lot that they've thought of. Um, so for me, it's just really pleasant to code for Drupal. And also like I've started hanging out on IRC and just the people there are incredibly cool. They're always so, they're really, really nice about me flinging questions at them all day um, and into the night. So. The community is like is also amazing, but uh, mostly I like the code. You know, on IRC, there's always a fresh time zone to throw your questions into, right? Totally so, Somebody's true. already awake. Totally true. <laughs> totally true. What are you most excited about in Drupal 8? Drupal 8. I'm most excited about the fact that we're finally using like modern things and like that we're using all these PHP 5.4 features. I love like I've been held back in having to use like PHP 5.2 and support older versions of PHP and now finally I'm getting to use things like traits I'm getting to use namespaces you know closures and you know and when I finally started like writing code in an object oriented way I love it to death like more, way more than just writing a bazillion functions so the fact that we're moving everything in Drupal to that um, that that I that excites me a lot I really dig that awesome yeah you're at Acquia for a few months and you're working for Angie Byron directly, yes. and she's got you building what you call the DMU. Well, she started it um, at a hackathon, apparently. I think maybe two hackathons ago, she and a bunch of other Octo people, I think uh, Jess, uh, XJM, Wim Lears, Tim Plunkett, 
I think they started building this thing, and they were building it for PHP Code Sniffer, which turned out to be not very handy, not very useful. So they're actually trying to make this thing like not just a hackathon project, but they want it to be like a real thing that module authors will actually use to get a jump start on porting their modules to Drupal 8. And DMU stands for the Drupal Module Upgrader. Correct. So talk a little bit about how that, how that works and uh, how far you've gotten it. How it works like technically? Sure. Well, it works right, okay, well, it, it's a Drush command. Um, what you're gonna do when you wanna use it is you'll, you know, you install Drush, you install the module, uh, you run composer install, and then you can put a Drupal 7 module in your modules directory, and obviously Drupal 8 won't see it because it's a Drupal 7 module, and then you would run Drush DMU upgrade from the command line, and it would go in there and change things that can be changed, that it knows how to fix for Drupal 8, the goal being that you could at least turn on that module uh, without crashing your site. And if and that's that's the easy way. If you're a more advanced coder, if you're like a module author, you might want to just, maybe you don't want a module rewriting your module for you. Um, you can also run Drush DMU Analyze, which generates like a report of things that are wrong, like, and points you to the documentation online where you can see what changed and how to fix it exactly. Oh, that's great. Yeah. And does running Drush DMU um, also leave you code comments about things you're gonna have to go in and fix? It's going to, yeah. Like, we don't have that functionality in there yet, um, but, uh, but that's definitely gonna be in there. For certain things that it can't fix, it's gonna leave like a fix me that says, hey, this changed, here's where you can read more about it, and uh, please fix this. We were actually going to integrate DMU with Coder initially um, because Coder integrates with PHP Code Sniffer to find problems. Um, but when, when we sort of realized that PHP Code Sniffer wasn't going to cut it, we decided to drop integration with that. So like, hopefully we can integrate with Coder further on down the line, but it's not a priority right now. Okay, so how many people are working on this right now? Uh, mostly just me and Angie, and of that it's mostly me right now. Um, I, I hope to change that and get uh, community people coming in. And the thing is that it's it's all based on plugins. Like what we're working on right now is kind of establishing an API um, that you can use to write more plugins. And the point of a single plugin is to convert some piece of your code like, oh, you know, this function call changed completely, you know, like variable get no longer exists in Drupal 8. So you have to write a plugin to change that function call to a Drupal 8 version. So there's like, and you know, maybe some hooks are removed or some hooks have changed format. So there's plugins to do all this stuff. And we want, I'm hoping that uh, the community will step up and So DMU itself is a uh, really open, flexible architecture, right? That it's lets people be, yeah. adapt it and add to it a as they need. Yeah, definitely intended that way for sure. Cool. It's a very thin wrapper around a lot of plugins, basically. That's nice. It's a great way to do it. Um, and I think it's a, a great enabler for people who want to scratch their own itch. Like, they have a special problem or a special application. They can go ahead and fix that. Definitely. And give that back without sort of trying to pull apart a, a, a massive uh, old-style uh, <clears throat> pile of arrays and functions. And uh, Right. I was definitely thinking about that. And part of one of the things that also is an advantage is um, that DMU relies for, like, to manipulate PHP code. You know, you don't want to go in there and do, like, stir replace and, you know, really tiny little... Like minutia, you don't want to work at like that micro level. So um, we're relying on a library called Farborist, uh, which is written by um, a guy who goes by the handle of Grom 358 okay. uh, from Australia, and he works for an outfit called Previous Next, and they're actually listed on DMU's page as a co-sponsor. And this library is amazing because it like very carefully analyzes PHP code and it creates like a syntax tree so that you can crawl through it with basically jQuery style and manipulate the code and you know, create function calls or create new variables or change this or change that in a very structured way so that you don't have to be doing, you know, you don't have to be working with like tokens like you would be in Code Sniffer, for example. Shout out to Previous Next. Many good friends of mine down there, and thank you. Yeah, Brom's kicking ass on this. Y you get free beers again the next time I see you. I'll buy them. I will buy them. <laughs> so, the groundwork is set. You've got tough, interesting problems and challenges and all sorts of opportunities to expand this and make it a really valuable tool for the community. Um, I think I'm really proud that Acquia is paying you to do this. Um, previous, next, previous Next is uh, lending a hand, but we're open source, we're Drupal. Angie Byron is going to be doing a buff about this at DrupalCon 
Amsterdam. If you're interested in this, you should really go check it out. It's on the uh, DrupalCon Amsterdam webpage. I was looking at it. I will post a link to it, and I will post the day and time with the notes for this show. Okay. So you and I'm really going to be there too, but remotely, I think. So you know, we're going to have my head on a laptop, and we're going to spin it around, and I'll be there to answer questions and you know help people out and. All right, that. and I'm I'm sure if there's a coalition of people who are interested that um, this could be something that you can work on at the Code Sprints in Amsterdam, get on IRC, uh, really get going and uh, make this a great tool to, you know, it's about time that we start getting our modules upgraded to D8. It's it's getting closer and closer. Yeah. So this sounds like a fantastic project to really accelerate that process. Accelerates a good word because like one thing I should mention is that it doesn't. It's not you know, it's not a complete wizard. Like it can't rewrite your module for you the way that like a human could rewrite it. It's sort of, it just changes function calls and sort of, and be, it starts you on the way to having a Drupal 8 module that works. But it's, it's sort of a jump start on refactoring your modules for Drupal 8 because so much has changed and just the way we write modules is different now that uh, it's, it's meant to start you down the road, not necessarily do absolutely everything for you. There's another great tool for that. Um, and um, Jesus Olivas, was on the podcast with me talking about he's got a Drupal 8 uh, module scaffolding generator. Console. So, yeah, we looked into that. Yeah. Actually, we tried, we, we were going to try to use that. It ended up that we didn't really need it, but um, I looked at that and I was actually really impressed with it. Yeah, that's cool. And he gave a great presentation um, in what I call Jam's virtual Drupal camp, which is uh, also on the Acquia podcast every now and then. So that's worth checking out. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Most excellent. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me and your work. Thanks for having me. Anyone who got excited about this like I did, please come along to Amsterdam, to Angie's Boff, and uh, start working, get in on the sprint, help us out, that would be awesome. Find me on IRC, ask questions, read the developer docs, um, you know. What's your handle on IRC? Fenaproxima, P-H-E-N-A, Proxima. Okay, you, there you have it. Thank you so much. Thank you, man. <laughs> <laughs>